Welcome everyone. As discussed in my previous video in the team leader series, today we will get into more advanced things regarding being a good team leader and that is mastering the artillery. It is often believed that all you have to do as a team leader is drop artillery and that's it. But since I'm sort of a nerd and liking to optimize things, I found out during my Red Orchestra 2 career, so to speak, that there's a lot more to artillery than simply pushing a button on the radio. In this video, you will learn the difference between artillery and mortars, what is your intention, artillery timings and I will show you my personal table which is extremely useful. So starting with the first thing let me explain you the difference between artillery and mortars. Mortars fire 36 shots aka 6 rockets 6 times over a pretty small area but it's enough to destroy infantry. Unlike artillery there is no gap between the salvos and usually it will hit even people in cover. On the other hand artillery fires 24 shots aka 4 rockets 6 times over a bigger sized area. Each rocket is individually more powerful than mortar rockets but since they are spaced out over time, infantry could run between the salvos to the cap zone or where they are needed. Please understand I am not discussing rockets because they aren't useful at all and they have a very big cooldown. But now that you understand the difference between artillery and mortars, let's move on to the big question. What is my intention? From experience there are two main reasons why you should drop either artillery or mortars. One, to cut enemy reinforcements coming back to the objective and two, to clear out an objective so you can cap it quickly. If your intention is to block the enemy entrance back inside the objective, you must block one of their spawns. For this you need to know all the spawns on every map perfectly and have a good understanding of what is happening in the moment on the battlefield. Otherwise, if your intention is to clear out an objective so you can cap it quickly, a simple recomplain will show you where to drop it. What I generally see other team leaders do is a combination between the two with no particular intention in mind and that is a big problem. What is even a bigger problem is that people got used to specific artillery marks and as soon as you divert from those, everyone on the server starts bitching like why did you call artillery there, why did you do this, why did you do that, why did you call mortars, idiot team leader and so on. My advice to all the team leaders out there who want to, let's say, optimize the art of artillery is to simply not give a fuck about the people who are bitching. To explain things even better, I will give you a visual example with a classic situation on Spartan Let's say Germans are attacking Delta. Like I said previously, you need to know all the spawn locations, not only yours but also the enemy. If you have Charlie capped and now you push Delta, there are two spawn locations for attackers. One over here in the galleys and the other one in the church. The enemy also has two spawns available, one on the defender's far right side and one on the defender's far left side. Now if your intention is to let's say clear out the objective of enemy troops so that my friendly troops capture the objective quickly, I would simply call mortars on the side where the biggest concentration of enemy infantry is. As a side note, it will all make sense later why I choose mortars instead of artillery. But let's say we are in a situation where we quickly captured Charlie and the enemy doesn't have a lot of troops inside Delta. Now it's the perfect time to keep up the momentum to our advantage and simply block one of their spawns with artillery. A good question is which spawn to block and the answer is the one where we don't have troops. In our example we would want to block the defender's far left spawn because we will have troops on the other side of delta who will be positioned at cover behind the houses and they will have an advantage over the enemy who will be forced to use the other spawn point and push inside the objective by crossing an open area through the street that is if they are not stupid and suiciding into the artillery all the time on the other side. Even though the example was a bit simple and it is kinda similar to what everyone is already doing on Spartanovka, everything changes on other maps and I hope that through this example you understood the purpose of having a clear intention in mind before pushing a button on the radio. Now let's move forward and discuss the most important thing which a lot of people don't know and that is timings. In my honest opinion, if every team leader would know this, the games would be totally different. But let's say there is a game with two decent team leaders. Both of them call recon plane, they communicate with the players, they give orders, they call recon and drop artillery. However, one of them knows the timings while the other one doesn't. That team already has a huge advantage and in my opinion they have an easier way to victory simply because of that. For example, since there already is this misconception in the 
RO2 community that mortars are cancer and they are useless and if you use them you are an idiot, a defending team leader on Spartanovka 9 times out of 10 will drop artillery the entire round and never call mortars and that is completely wrong. Besides the talk with intention and focusing strictly on timings, Spartanovka has a total map time of 20 minutes. The artillery has a cooldown of exactly 5 minutes. Do you see where I'm going with this? You are able to call artillery exactly 4 times during the entire round. However, since it will take even a few seconds to get to the radio right as you start the map, you already can't fire 4 times artillery during the entire round. But the mortars have exactly 4 minutes cooldown, so that means in the total map playtime, we could squeeze 3 artilleries and 1 mortar, and we would still have 1 minute left uh, in case of mistakes. For example, you get killed on the radio and it takes 20 seconds to get back to it. On the other hand, the attackers have a shorter cooldown for artillery and that is 3 minutes and 20 seconds, meaning in a 20 minutes map playtime they can fire exactly 6 artilleries, which you understand by now it's not possible, so they have to drop mortars somewhere to catch up some time. And another quick example just to show you how important it is to know those timings, we are attacking station. The cooldown for artillery is a huge 6 minutes and 40 seconds in a total of 20 minutes playtime, meaning you can fire exactly 3 artilleries which translates to actually only 2 artillery since you lose time getting to the radio. So why not use mortars instead which have 3 minutes and 20 seconds cooldown and you could actually fire 5 full mortars compared to only 2 artilleries. And now for the big reveal I will give you my personal table that I use to have the timings correct on every single map. I need to mention that all the data inside this table has been made available by the player called Ice Cold. Him being the main nerd who geeked out every single map for all the information, even how cold it is on different maps. In the description of this video you will have a link where you can find both my table and also ice cold huge data if you are interested. All I did is take out the main important things that are useful to me as a team leader and organize them nicely in a colored table. Since I have two monitors I simply keep this picture open on one of them as I play Red Orchestra and I never make a mistake with the timings. In the ending of this video I to give you one more cool small bonus on why this table is so useful. Let's imagine a situation where we attack Rakovice. We are attacking Alpha when suddenly I hear the classic enemy artillery sound. Then I quickly look at the time and I make a mental note that the enemy called artillery at minute 28 for example. In the meantime we managed to capture Alpha and we are now moving towards the bunker, bravo. I look in my table and see that defenders have artillery available every 3 minutes and 45 seconds. From there I extract a couple of seconds to have enough time to prepare my troops and I round it down to let's say 3 minutes. Since less time enemy commander called artillery in minute 28, when the timer reaches 25 minutes, I start telling people to move away from the front of the bunker door as the enemy will drop artillery very soon and to start pushing the side doors as I prepare the area with smokes. And now if you think about it, every single person who listens to me and moves away from the front side of Bravo to not get blown into pieces by enemy artillery is a saved ticket. Do this over and over again and combine all the information I gave you in this video and you will understand why I said that a team leader who knows the timings and spawns has a huge advantage and it is more likely to win a map. Thank you everyone for your time watching this video and if you liked it please subscribe to be notified when the next video is out. I will see you then, have a great week, bye bye.